Anto, you ready to start? You said we're starting. Absolutely. Do you have body? You got body, phone in the back. Hey, hey, uh, body phone. Uh, you change it. You, you change it to uh, body. AC phone. Milan, What's right. wrong with body? What do you have a problem with body? I have no you? problem with body. Oh, I have you. a problem with you. We, we, we. Can you All right. start? Can, can we, we can we start from the bottom? Why don't you start? The yeah, bottom? Why don't you start this time? The bottom from the one, bottom. Milan? Oh. <laughs> oh. I want to start from something that I I think I've never seen in Serie A before. Hmm. Uh-oh. I oh, have oh, seen I it before, uh, dilly but dang. not in Serie A. Dilly dang. So, let's start from uh, Frosino, Cagliari Frosinone. <sighs> Frosinone is winning three nothing. Crazy. I think we're in the in the second Seven, half, sixty fifth, seventy second, seventy second minute. Okay, I have never seen and Mike. I, I don't. I don't know if there's a stat. It's never happened. That. It's never happened in before. the history of Serie A. Yeah. No team has, was ever winning three zero and yeah. in the opposite. Because I in the last fifty years, I have never seen it. I've seen it in Champions League. Yeah. I have seen it, but then he went into overtime. <laughs> yeah. I would say, I would say the name. I would say the name. Jeez. So and, 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 they, left and, right. and they missed the penalty in the first half. Cagliari missed yeah. the penalty, yeah, yeah. but they also had like two posts, I believe. Mm-hmm. I think it was two posts before they scored, so they were unlucky. So uh, you know, like, can you? Uh, you're on the seventy second minute of the game. That's Ranieri, my, you know, must have said, you know, that's it. This is my last game. <laughs> he had zero wins. Yeah, 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 yeah zero wins. I mean, one of the goals, <laughs> the the defender, the the, the goalie pass, they're always in the yeah. middle. They lose the ball and they score. And then in the last uh, second, the last thirty seconds, they could have scored another goal. It was two against one. Yeah, he messed it up. <laughs> if yeah, he gives yeah. the ball, he yeah, only yeah. has to square the square the ball, and it's uh, it's five. Uh, they score five goals. So I thought that was the way to start this. Okay, we never talk about Cagliari. You know he hates us. Why? He's he not a fan us. of Pablo just, it, This guy, you could find the bad thing in anything. Wait, wait. He we just put on, we put on the highlights because every time yeah. we walks in, we showed Cagliari winning, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, I can't stand that." I can't. But I, I just I Cagliari. want them to go to Serie B again. Pavoletti also. Pavoletti is the one that scored the winner, and he scored the two late goals to win the game. Mm. He's Explain. the one that scored against Bari. Explain. My dad doesn't understand. Okay, so they they were they are instrumental for us still spending an extra year in Serie B. Pavoletti. No, it has nothing to do with the NCAA. It does. It does. It should have been Bari. It should have been Bari. It should have been Bari. And been on been top been of everything, <laughs> Enrico bet on, uh, on Frosinone <laughs> to win. <laughs> and I was on the car. And then he found out that, oh my God, he said to me, I said, this is too much. He was going to win a lot so of money. They were winning. Oh, okay. we gotta, we, he's got to go with Fajoli and with Tonali. You he's got to go to rehab. They were winning. That guy bets too much. Enrico told me they were winning 3 nothing. <laughs> he walks into the car. 3 <laughs> 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 one winning. He's got it with me. I think it's, I'm a bad luck for him. Yeah, the mush. I don't know. And then he had thing Monza. And at the end of the game, he goes, oh, Monza tied 1-1. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> but wait a moment. We ask you to do the presentation, not to talk about the Salernitana or the stuff. Why don't you introduce yourself and the rest of the crew over here? Introduce? Uh, what do we have to introduce? Yeah, well, yeah, first wow. Wow. You had that right first Everybody, yeah. Everybody, Everybody knows each other. Gopher, why don't you do it? Yeah, I want to see you introduce it. Introduce who? Yeah, 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 yeah. Introduce the show who and all the viewers and each one of us. This is Mr. Stu on your right. Mr. Mr. Castle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop uh, right here on I'll my lap. So I thought to that he was going uh, to, tonight was the um, Halloween show. So mm. he showed me what um, what he got. He got a referee. Mm-hmm. So he was going to be Mr. Referee tonight. So Mr. Referee, and he only wanted the red card. They didn't want any other card. <laughs> so here it is, Mr. Referee. But you know, uh, is it what happened with the with the custom? This guy's got something over there, and uh, what happened with you? Actually, you don't need a custom anyway, right? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> I could I could come up with something. Okay, Mike, Mike, what, what would you be? Mike is wearing uh, the new the new sweatshirt. Oh wow, that's coming out. Is, guys. Oh, Mike. By the way, thank you for the shirt, Mike. Look at this, guys. <laughs> Did you have the drop already? Did you drop? No, it? yeah, it's November coming 4th. out in uh, four do- four days now. November four. What's the day? The thirtieth. But why are you guys waiting? There are a lot of people asking. We have to do the marketing for it. Oh, we, we did the photos, the pictures, the build up. We have a couple uh, videos that we're filming. I guess you're not part of the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm too good looking to market that uh, to market the culture. That's maybe. true. 
That's probably true. So, okay, Pete, why don't you do the introduction? Starting <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the stool on your left and then uh, <laughs> don't all the, the way joke. down to Stam over here. Don't copy the joke. Don't copy the joke. How many times did you fall for it? I thought, I thought <laughs> you, you were going to be the mummy. To tell you the, the mummy. Truth. He always is. 365 <laughs> days a year. No, I'm serious. Somebody said to me that I look like the mummy. Everybody says it. I don't know what's more you scary. Like more you as the mummy. mummy or you as a referee. If you're the referee, I walk off the field. Man. He was a referee one time. And if you complained louder, remember? Oh, they wanted to beat him up Come as on. a referee. Were, what, what was was it? When was that? When was that? I remember he was an... Uh, I think people were you playing? Do you remember? Come on. I was I a referee. Remember. Yeah, yeah we said outside. Oh, outside. He called yeah. the penalty. He's like, come on, that was outside the box. Okay, free kick. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, man, we got, you know, like, it was like a disaster. <laughs> I didn't I have the bar to support him. <laughs> if you could change one rule, if you're the if you're the king, and you change one rule in football, we've seen a couple right. of in weird... soccer or football. Soccer, of course. Okay. <laughs> no American football. And you said football. No American football. Uh, uh, is this guy for real? In college. What would it be? What would that be? He said soccer or football. I'm I tell you what would that be? I'm gonna cry. I would have just eliminate, I would just uh, uh, introduce the, the stop <laughs> stop at the clock. <laughs> <laughs> He's gotta stop himself <laughs> first. That's what the sound No more wasting make of time. No more <laughs> wasting of time. And yes. I would just put even the two minute uh, two minute warning. <laughs> two minute warning. Yeah. <laughs> But they have, uh, I mean, they're supposed, no, the they drawing is supposed to be six <laughs> seconds. They don't. They don't. Nobody enforce it. Nobody enforce yeah, they don't it. The rule it. is there. But no, it's not. Nobody enforce yeah. it. They How does it go around with a taser if you don't do it six you seconds? something uh, other than that. I will take a taser, you're right. Instead of the whistle, if somebody doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> I will taste He's going to go over into players. <laughs> bam, bam, before the game starts. Right? No. I will taste in Zaggy first. <laughs> You You're holding a gun, man. And Allegri, Allegri, oh my God. He doesn't that need a taser, guy. that guy is oh already. How about Pioli, Anton? Uh, no? That guy doesn't need a taser, he's asleep already. <laughs> that guy's <laughs> up asleep. Milan will finally win a game, though, if you did that, maybe. I don't know. What's, what, what, what has gone on with you guys? You know what he did? I think Pioli, what he did this week, I think he went to talk to uh, his buddy next door to him, you know, the coach of uh, the coach of uh, of Napoli, and he said, "How am I going to screw up this game? You're very good at taking uh, Oziman out, and you take even Carasvelas out. Let me see if I can double that up. I'm going to take Leao's out, and I'm going to take uh, Giroud's out just to to get even. And that's what he did. Why are you blaming I mean, that? I don't get it. Milan had like so many chances in the first half; they couldn't yeah. finish. That's Pioli's fault. Yeah, but, but they should have scored four goals on the first half. But take somebody else out, not okay, those two guys. Okay, but you're saying that, but he's not going to score the chances too. Milan should have." Listen. Finish the game in the first half. That's their fault. Well, Rudy Garcia is not really the top of the coach, but we're not supposed to be copying what he does. You know? Whatever. You never take Giroud out and, and lay out. Especially so you when think the that's game what is lost the, the game? Uh, listen. Listen. I want my best forward, especially if you want to get, uh, win the game, on the field. Okay? I want my forwards on the field. Why are you taking the, them out? What are you putting? Jovic? And then who else did he put in? Come on, man. Just give me a break. You know what scared me? I listened to Giroud's post-match uh, press conference, and he said what Mike said, that, you know, we had these chances, the three, four chances that we need to be more clinical. And, uh, you know, he was mad, which I think is normal. I don't think there's anything controversial with that. The thing that scared me is he said, when we conceded 2-1, because Milan were up 2-0, when we conceded the first goal, we didn't know what to do. We didn't know if we attack, and we didn't know if we defend. That... <laughs> That middle ground right there, him coming out saying that after we heard what Calabria said a few days before, that's where I'm nervous. That's pretty embarrassing. Milan used to know exactly what their game was. That's the, when they won the say. Scudetto, they played with 11 men, 11 lions, everybody sacrificing, pressing, staying compact, staying together, understanding the game plan. My bigger fear is not just the recent results because I could also justify it by poor form, injuries. My, it's it's that. Why don't they know what they're what they need to do in that moment? What do you what do you think? I don't know. He was very visible uh, upset when he came out. Giro, Giro, very upset. I've never seen him this upset. Um, I don't know. They uh, they seems like right now they're going through a, a stage of the uh, the game where they they confused. I mean, uh, Pioli seems seems very confused. Uh, 
about uh, do do I go all the way up? Do I stay all the way back? Do I defend? Do I attack? I mean, uh, it's it's uh, in the first half they play very well. They play very well, but then in the second half you have to be able to control the game. You're winning to nothing. You got to control. I mean, you're you're Milan. You know, you're not playing uh, uh, against the bottom team. You are AC Milan. Um, so it's uh, it's. I thought that they were gonna. After the two nothing, I said that's it. This game, yeah, yeah, this yeah. game is over. It looked like it. This game is over, especially like for the it. way that Napoli started the game well. Actually, before the yeah. goal that Giroud scored, Napoli started the game well. I, I thought that it was lending itself to them, and at at two zero when they were down. On the flip side. What's crazy is that the whistles, the, the boos from the Napoli fans, because they already were not happy with Rudy Garcia. Even mm-hmm. if they've been getting results in the past couple games, Union Berlin, Verona, they're not playing the brilliant football. They're not mm-hmm. playing. They don't have the same enthusiasm. They just came off winning a Sudetto. They don't want to be seen in the way that they're seen right now. Weird uh, defending, you know, not that same uh, spectacular going forward. So it was a weird position for both of these clubs coming into the game where I think both fan bases are starting to question their culture. I mean, Napoli for sure with Rudy Garcia. I, the most thing that I see is Rudy Garcia out, mm-hmm. but also with uh, with Pioli. Where do you stand, Pete? What would you make of this game? I mean, Milan, You, I, the biggest problem with, with this result is the fact that you're up 2 nothing, right? And you don't know how to manage the game. So at, at, at that point, you know, I purely blame Pioli for not making adjustments, for not identifying what is the right substitution or how to have the, the team come on on the field to win that game. And like you said, when Giroud says we don't know what we're doing at the 2-1, that's a problem where Pioli's got to make it evident, say, hey, this is going to be a game where we're going to have to, you know, grit our teeth and, and defend, or hey, we're going to play our game, we're Milan, and we're going to do, and we're going to die by, by our, live and die by our sword. So... <laughs> Listen, with the coaches, we, you know, every everybody makes mistakes. I think with with Pioli, it's a little bit of, you know, lack of of luck in a sense. Where versus Juve, they really, you know, didn't deserve to lose that game, right? Um, now this game, uh, you, you know, you you don't have any center backs, you don't have any defenders. It's a, it's an issue with injuries. We had Florenzi <clears throat> as a center back. Not center, but Florenzi could have just uh, just slide into the yeah. role of this Pellegrino, and uh, not really as a center, but uh, you know with uh, but, with uh, Teo Hernandez in front of him, but that could have been a better those, thing. But those two are Listen. not defenders. And just last point before I let you talk, you know, the f- for 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 Pioli, I think his biggest problem is making adjustments. He's not able to make the adjustment. He's gonna play his way, and that's it. And a lot of times he relies on the brilliance of the individuals, Giroud, who. This game, he scores two goals Leal. and lay out. Yeah. And when they're not 100% or on, after a certain point, you can't keep Giroud 35 years old or however old he is for 90 minutes yeah. every game, every game. There is going to be a point. So he could have looked like a genius if Jovic comes in and scores, or he's going to get the, the blame for, for what happened. And but then, why do you, my question, Marco, I think is trying to get to you. I said, hey, why don't you learn how to play a little bit defense and how to contain the other team? Just put a defensive midfielder in. I do a 4 4 2. Why did you have to do this still? You have to keep the 4 3 3 on the field. Just do a 4 4 2. Just bring somebody else inside, an additional midfielder. Okay? That four, would four, be just. Once to start the second half? No, the second half, you win it 2 0. When? 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 when, when do you... Even on the 2 1, when you're, down to, when you're up 2 1 in Simulan, Bring another defensive midfield and still con- leave Juru and lay out on the top over there. Bring Pobega inside. He's a capable guy. To close very- the game, there was so much time left though. Not Mike, scored early in the Mike, second half. You bring a kid with no experience into the field. The kids was I, I shaking. Could tell, was just yeah, looking was at it. Was shaking. Yeah, it was nervous. So as soon as you give him the ball, it was not even. I'm making a simple pass. So uh, I would have just uh, go with the experience. Either bring Bobek yeah. inside, just sol- solidify the now. midfield, get an extra guy. Because if you filter a little bit better from the midfield, I don't think Politano is going to make all of those runs and uh, you're like, uh, hey, hello, everything is free on the side over here. <laughs> but, you know, the kid goes for uh, just to bring the head because the guy's lapping him and then he scores a goal. Even Magnan, Magnan kind of disappointed me today. Magnan could have just saved both goals. Whoa. Yes. Come on. The shots, 
We're at come him. On. No, okay? come on. Yo, Raspadori's yo, free yo, kick yo. was a bullet. You are one of the top goalkeeper. You're supposed no. to be making those saves. Yeah. On the, on on the, the free on the kick, free he didn't kick. see the ball. He didn't see he the ball. See the ball. They, they were 15 he, guys. He, yeah. he picked the other side. Well, the wall yeah. was set up He picked bad. the near post one. Yeah, but also no. uh, they had players. They had a player that oh. moved after, too. Yeah. That was in his the vision. The Napoli players, they were also oh, yeah. on the wall on the other side. They added to it. It was not on the weak side. It was on the strong side. I don't want to argue about goalkeepers. Those are savable savable goals. What I want to know is just philosophy wise, and then let's move on to Napoli. It's I watched against PSG because it's not just one game. It's even how Milan got caught out against Juventus, where Chow is in this position where Milan seems like the field is so stretched, right? They try to play a high line, but there's so much space in between, and you're leaving amazing players in these positions to to lose, like Mbappe, for example, of PSG. It's which do you do? If if you're Pioli, what do you think he needs to resort to? We saw how he got picked apart in many big games, in the game against Inter, in the game against Paris Saint Germain. In the one against Juventus, for, for me, it, it's because they went down ten to eleven. So, but maybe you could say book how they they got the red card. For you, what do you think it is about this team? Because we've seen Milan try to do both. We've seen them high flying, beautiful, commit, press, stay compact. But then we've also seen the reverse where they try to manage games. Well, Which if, should it be? If you play the four three three, okay, you have three guys that are very high up. And then you you get the two uh, wing backs that go up. I mean, you got five guys up there in the midfield. Do you have the midfielders that uh, that they know how to knock somebody out and and don't let him go through? I mean, I don't think you have that type of midfielders. We uh, do, we do, Gatano. We do. Randers. <laughs> Randers is a good midfielder. Yeah, no, he's he's saying physicality. Yeah, but I'm talking about a Gattuso. I'm talking about a Gattuso. That is, you're not going to go through. When the ball. You know, when the ball comes to midfield, you're not going to get through. But that's why you have to make that adjustment. You go to four, a 4 3 3, a four, leave the two, two, the two forwards over there, make Giroud and Leao. Like a little, you space them a little, a little wider, and just you keep four, four midfielders. You do a 4 4 2. I mean, you need an additional midfielder over there just to, uh, you know, to uh, make it make it difficult for uh, the, for them to go through. The you have a lot of room, like Marco said. Marco was right. The, the we leave too much uh, space in between. The difference is not good enough for yeah. this type of That's player. That's what I think. Yeah. You know, I, I, they I'm, just I don't have the players, and they miss a lot of chances. It's yeah. been the theme of Milan. It's they're not clinical enough in those moments because if you want to play that sort of style, if you want to play the that high line, you'd expect you to be able to finish the chances when when you get them otherwise then you, you get put into the situation what do we think on the flip side for for napoli because i mean obviously when you're down to zero and then you come back to two it feels a lot better than mm. uh than it would have been prior mike you're nodding your head no i mean i was kind of surprised for napoli when i was two zero i was like ah rudy garcia start packing i was like that was a horrible half and it looks like milan's gonna score another two three goals in the second half but to my, I think to everyone's surprise, they ended up coming back, which is, you know, first of all, very difficult because Oshiman's still not there. Raspadori is there in place of him. Politano, yeah, he took advantage of Pellegrino being a, a new player over there, uh, taking advantage of his nerves and getting that goal early on. And from that point forward, Napoli got that momentum. The momentum totally shifted. From the first half, from Milan to Napoli completely. So it was definitely the tail so of two halves where do they go? Where do you think they go from there? Because there's still a lot of Napoli yeah. fans who are saying, so far, we're 10 rounds in. We're, the, we're still the guys that you have to steal the first Scudetto from us. Yeah. I think it buys time for Rudy Garcia, for sure, obviously. But it's it's still early to tell whether if if this performance is just a one-off or is going to be building from something. And for you? For me... I mean, he got a huge. This is pretty much a win from being two zero down and tying. Mm -hmm. But should we judge on those standards? Should we judge on the way that how bad they started? Because mm -hmm. we're we're kind of judging it like, oh wow, it started so bad, but at least it finished well. Yeah, I get your point. But I I would say that definitely buys him more time. I think he deserves it after this. If they lost, then there would be more questions. But Rudy Garcia did what he had to do. He made adjustments in the second half. He did, he did make good that, that's adjustments. What I, that's what I'm saying. So that's what it is at the end of the day. Which he had in the past. And If you have a manager that makes adjustments, tries to do new ideas when things aren't working, I think that's what you look for when you're on the hot seat. And right now he's doing it, so you got to give him credit. Uh -huh. See the next few games, how he's going to play in Europe too, uh, next two crucial games for sure. I think 
and go from there. It, it looked pretty good. Little little but they got they got lucky. I mean, I, I mean, despite uh, the fact that they tied the game, they, they the could have won it too. Yeah, they could have won. That's with what I'm saying. Which the last three seconds, they could have won. They got lucky. So I saw. They got lucky. Why you? Why can't you just say straight? No, they deserved. There was two different halves. Not lucky. So it's not. So it's not lucky then. No, no, they got lucky. They got lucky. We we did. We gave it to them. We gave them the game. Mike, AC Milan gave them the game. Square leg on a gold platter. I said, hey, take the tie. For them, it's a point gained. We lost the, the, the additional two points. That game was a sim for AC Milan to win. End of the story. The Be first half, not the second half. But the second half, we didn't play. That's so. exactly. Napoli they went, so it's not they, lucky. Listen, they Napoli, got the, Napoli they were able it. to come back. And, and that's what I would say also for Rudy Garcia's <sighs> point. If the, if the team is not supporting the coach... They don't come back exactly from two goals down, yeah. so that's a good sign. Good point. Napoli fans are gonna be harsh. That's what I was, it is. The uh, way that I was watching the studio, uh, they were playing with panettones. Those guys, who's gonna get the, the panettone? <laughs> who's gonna get the the the, the, shum, uh, the, the champagne or whatever? So uh, I think this guy is gonna see the panettone for Christmas. Maybe. He might Listen, not see the panettone. Uh, Rudy I mean, Garcia that, that, that. is still trying to learn the players that he has, the team that he has. He's still working with this. And they're not far away. It's not like they have been atrocious. It's a this performance is, that that's Yeah, but guess what? He's not this Deserbi, this Pep Guardiola. He's never been that. He was a he's a pragmatic coach and, and De Laurentiis went after him because of his progress or what he's been able to do in a Champions League setting. So he's pragmatic, he's gonna get the win. He's not always flashy this this beautiful yeah. style of football. The, the one thing out. I did like uh, from <laughs> uh, from Rudy Garcia is when he put Simeone in, which I, I feel like Simeone has been a little bit disrespected yeah. uh, lately. I, mm. I get that you have your pecking order. I get that you have Raspadori, and yeah. I like Raspadori a lot. I agree. I think Raspadori helps teams make play better football in general. Across the board, I think Raspadori is so great at his buildup. He's so good technically. But I love that he played them both together where Raspadori could play off of Simeone I felt like that helped the shape of Napoli look a little bit better. It looked like they went to like a uh, 4-4-2 or even a 4-2-3-1 at, at a certain point. Mm. Maybe, you know, going forward, that's what they need to do because it seemed like it fit. I get that we have the old Napoli still in our head on what they played, but the reality is it's different. The coach is different. The feeling around the club <laughs> is different. And it's also a very, uh, they had a lot of changes in the back line because that, that defense is not the same. You know, even the fact that he has, he puts Ostigard in um, after Rachmani comes off. Anyway, let's move on. But the, the, the uh, let me just say one one last thing about uh, Rudy Garcia. I mean, what changed from last year? It's Kim. Yeah, he's yeah. the only one that changed. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to replace one player. And you, the way I see uh, Osman as a problem with Rudy Garcia. Uh, Carrasquelli had a problem with Rudy Garcia. Simeone, you you don't respect him. Politano, uh, you know, had Politano had a problem with Rudy Garcia. I mean, the team is there. <laughs> the team it didn't forget how to play. But it's a philosophy, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's a but philosophy. But why would you change the philosophy when you had something beautiful? Because he's a different coach. But you had something beautiful. I you know. don't change a lot yeah. if something is working. He's a different coach. You know. We don't credit Allegri a lot of times on here, and I think for for right reasons. But he did a really great job when he mm. took over for Conte in 2013 after the third year, where Allegri in the first uh, sorry 2015. What am I saying? Um, he didn't change too much. He kept Conte's system because yeah. it was working because Juventus were dominating in Italy. He just managed and he slowly, yeah. implement very that, yeah. slowly started implementing mm. his style or different philosophies of what he believes yeah. in into the team. So I do think he he and we know I like he's a good manager. I yeah. think he's manages situations well. So I think there is merit to what you're saying. I'm just saying that there's definitely there's been a 180 of what Napoli looked like last year, philosophy wise, style of play wise, and enthusiasm wise, both from the players and from the fans. Let's move on to a team that's very enthusiastic. I just and that's say, Inter. Uh, very quickly, <laughs> I just I'm I just wonder if Spalletti had the pressure of taking a job. Knowing that you're the defending champs, would he play? He's the, the defending same Euro champs. He took that job. No, I get that, but I'm saying for a team like Napoli, if it was switched around, it would be interesting to see because there's added pressure with Spalletti. There wasn't. I'm not taking anything away from Spalletti. He was fantastic, but knowing that you just won the Scudetto and then you gotta come in and fill the shoes of the manager that just did that, it's not easy. They played the second half of the it's season basically easy. as you guys gotta come and catch us, and they still did well enough, even if mm. they they dipped in that. Anyway, so guys, can I move on or yeah, 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 keep yeah. going? One more now. thing, one more thing. <laughs> uh, 
we'll go to you. We'll go to Inter, Ooh. a team that's got a lot of enthusiasm. Completely dominated got the, the game. Because uh, I didn't get the whistle much. Yeah, you guys didn't need the whistles <laughs> against Lukaku. He touched the ball every once every every two minutes. Not even for a second, milliseconds. Listen, you fucking sorry. <laughs> You winning this miserable watch one nothing. Yeah, yeah okay. One did you watch the game? Give me a Come break. on, I thought you want to talk about Give Napoli being lucky. Me a break. Inter dominated the game. You know what the bottom <laughs> line is? We still only three points yeah, okay. behind you guys. We're okay. three points despite all, right. all of these freebies that we're giving points <laughs> yeah. to everybody. I know it's like trick or treating. Everybody that rings the doorbell, two points for you, three points for you, one point for you. You guys so far, anybody that rings the doorbell, you're not giving any points out or you're not, no candies out. <laughs> okay, that's so, how you but, win. Okay, so yeah. at some point, at some point, something is gonna go wrong, okay? So enjoy while you can right now, but you guys deserve it to be in first place. I have to give it to you. There you go, you deserve it. I anyway. mean, hey. You just wanna shake his hand? No. I that's what it looks like. You guys completely dominated the of game course. against Roma. Of course. Roma were there were. as uh, sitting ducks, just yeah. waiting for, for you, you to be able to draw. score. You weren't able to convert and, and to finish yeah. your chances in the first half, despite having so many of them. Roma, they, they wait. They're, they're happy to be 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, they're missing bad. players. They don't try to implement their style when they're lacking those those players. They rely on uh, set piece or they rely on these crosses. Cristante had uh, one, one good bad. header. That if he scored that, it would have really changed things Oof. up. But this Inter side is is so well oiled. It's it's really incredible to see the way that they change players, the way that they make substitutions, um, the evolution of where you become best best attack, best defense, best goal difference mm-hmm. from top to bottom, a, almost unplayable for most of that game. Listen, we can give compliments to Inter all day. They're great, best team on paper in Serie. A. But come on, Roma's got to do better than that. They look like a. They were just hoping for a draw at that point. <laughs> Mike, they were 10 minutes away. They were 10 minutes away. They almost but got him. I get that. They almost, but try to do something. You're not so letting, You're not a small... Try to do something, man. Like what? Do like what Pioli do just go all the way out and get four or five goals? Why? Why four or five goals? It's a team that should be Listen, challenging Roma for played the only four. game that they could have played against a team like that. And they played in San Siro. Come on. You want to just do what's the but why are you supporting they play this the kind counter. of football? They play I, the counter. I, I hate them playing like it's not like they're a tiny team. They play like they're a tiny team, and it pisses me off because they whatever you can say players not there. Mourinho, come on, you got to be better than that for your fans too. Your fans, what fans? It was in, <laughs> oh, in San Siro, Mike. I'm just in general. I'm not saying ah, physically there. Yes, okay. I don't right. think that's a good performance. And they shouldn't play with that mentality. It pisses me off to see that. Mike, they don't have Dybala. They don't have Abraham. Oh, they, yeah. they don't yeah. have the top players. Oh, no. it's not what are you it's expecting? It's a mentality. And everybody but had a whistle mentality. just to whistle down what on Lukaku. What does that mean? But what, what, it, but what does that mean? You're giving excuses for that performance. What's that to do with the whistle? That's what <laughs> he's just giving up. He, he went there for a tie. Yeah. That's all. Say, if he could get a point out That's of it. That's all. He got this close to where yeah. to get the, 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 the point. That's he, it. Not gonna, he was not going to do it. Anything other than that. He that was, was close to getting a point, and that's all he went there for. Do you agree with the strategy? Yeah, yeah, of course. You agree with the strategy? Yeah, I do. You're going to get five goals. Why yes. You gonna, it's going to be five nothing. Like, like I, 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 I agree 100% with Mourinho. Listen, Marino. I don't agree with that. You don't have, I don't like, like I said, Marino. you don't have Dybala. You don't have Abraham. You don't have Pellegrini. What do you want? Come on, you, man. You, you, what are you going to go out with? with one, one, one little pushback. With one, one could say Sassuolo Jesus. played against Inter with players that are even less known, right? And they, they were able to beat Inter. It's about mentality. Sassuolo's got nothing to lose. Uh, Roma, they have a lot of pressure, and they're they behind where they're supposed to be. And one point would have helped them a lot. Uh, because then in the next couple of games, maybe they can get a, a few wins, and then they're back to where they belong. Right now, they're behind. So uh, he has a lot of pressure right now to... To be uh, to come out. Yeah, I any, agree. Any takeaways from the game, Pete? No, I mean from either side. Doesn't yeah, have to be the Roma. Uh, well, Roma, we know already what the game plan was. I think it was very evident. Inter, you know the way that they play, it's it's fascinating to watch. I do want to see a little bit more, you know, um, clinical finishing in front of in front of in front of net. But you know the the team play, they hit the post. There was there was a lot of action. Moving the ball, um, Inzaghi is stuck with these yellow card substitutions with Pavar. But you know, Darmian was there last year that brought Inter to the to the final Champions League. So it's a, a great sub, and uh, I have to give um, you know, tip my hat to Aslani, who 
you know, comes in and he's had some hard times finding space in the, in the midfield because he, had, you know, Inter has this the spectacular uh, players. But he, he hit a, a perfect ball, a dime to Di Marco that led to the to the goal. Where's the defense? And and so. yeah, yeah, but listen, yeah. that was that was, so that was a great ball. Listen, that's a great ball. You're gonna defend well. So, and and then Turam, let me tell you, Turam has oh, been player. Yeah, yeah. clutch, and For it sure. is so fitting Come that on. the replacement of Lukaku is able to score the goal and win the game. Lukaku was inexistent. You can tell also the players were pumped. The stadium was was really really. Uh, Had a lot of whistles. Yeah, <laughs> the app, real whistle. You know. And one thing, whatever. a little bit disappointed. I have to be honest with you. Why can Inzaghi? Uh, don't, he doesn't let the Fratesi and Barella play on the same. Uh, you know, starting the game and then uh, going all the way almost. Uh, why can Fratesi be a, being a starter? I think, I think he's rotating them. Rotating, no. Fratesi never starts yeah. the game. He well, just comes. Barella and Fratesi play together. Five minutes, ten minutes before no, the end of the game. he played twenty-five no. minutes. It was perfect Ten enough. Minutes. He started versus in the Champions League game. Barella right. was on the bench, so you're wrong on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Trick or treat. <laughs> you said you're wrong on I that. am starting. I'm saying in the campionato. I'm not saying to you. Didn't I say the Champions? Uh, you're trying to say yeah, the You're trying to say the Champions. Listen, Mkhitaryan also last year. Mkhitaryan. Listen, he. He's been outperforming. Oh, for sure, he's been doing very well. You know good. what? My expe- yeah, any yeah. expectations? So, so he, he's. So oh, let's he's look at the stats. How many minutes did Fratesi play in the Campionato? No, I know the minutes. Oh, oh, so no, you were admitting, more. but Fratesi no, got beat. Me. He's that rotating. Fratesi doesn't get the play. I'm saying he's rotating. Rotating doesn't mean. Look at the minutes. A rotation means okay. You do sixty percent. He does forty. Let's Fratesi look at the doesn't even do ten. Like you know the minutes. Fratesi doesn't even do ten. You guys are like ten, dog. You're arguing over. But also, Fratesi's got to earn a spot. Fratesi's a better player. Fratesi's got to earn a spot. Um, exactly. Mkhitaryan was a starter. He's exactly. got to prove himself that he Mkhitaryan. should be a starter. Fratesi is a, it's a, it's a complete Mkhitaryan's player. Mkhitaryan's been doing incredible. Yeah, Mkhitaryan. Yeah, Dude, I was looking at Can't your next game, you. Inter's next tough, game, tough. and it becomes tough. Next, you have Atalanta mm-hmm. away, uh, Salzburg. Then you play Frosinone at home. Juventus away, Benfica away, Napoli away. Uh, then you have Copitalia, either Bologna, Verona. Then you have Udinese, Real Sociedad, and then Lazio. Lazio again away. So right now is, is crunch time. Mm-hmm. I think... I think if Inter make it through this period and get to mid-December, still in first place with the way that everybody else is, it could be—it's a wrap. It could be scary. No, not a wrap, but no, no. it starts to be scary. I think that this <laughs> really a is a tough test for this Inter side. We're praising the depth. We're praising the style of play. If they get through this period, we're going to tell which Inter it is. Yeah, I mean, the ne- this week coming up is important because one, Atalanta. We saw what the performance they put in. And European week too. And yeah. if we win versus Salzburg, we're in. You're through, yeah. So that gives a you know, you have the chance now to not necessarily versus Benfica put your weaker team, but be able to put in maybe some fresh legs and not have that. And then not be great. Fratesi. Fratesi will <laughs> play. <laughs> you get the rotation. Let's let's talk about uh, Juventus got a one zero win over uh Verona at the death, Cambiaso scored uh Jeez. scored the goal. Um, <laughs> that ruined my day. Makes me double oh, happy. That. My but, God. but the whole game was was really talked about for a lot of the incidents that happened. The Moiskin has a goal that's chalked offside for uh, I think his pinky that toe. That was crazy. Might have been. Yeah, that, was that, that, that got to do something about that. that was I mean, it was, it was this much. I mean, that's not offside to me. It's a correct call technically, but we're just okay. saying. In the future, I think that we have to have a conversation about why do we do Definitely. these sorts of offsides because there has to be a better way. Whether it's, you know, you look, because I'm trying to think of what we can do. Do you just look at the monitor real quick yeah. without having to zoom in and and all the 3D graphics? Is that the way that you tell? Or do you make the line thicker? Or do you, Maybe what's the margin of error that we give? More consistent than line thicker. before, what would you change in soccer? Not just a stopwatch. In football? Uh, uh, soccer uh, in football. <laughs> American football. <laughs> what about it? Australian you, football. Uh, a, a crazy <laughs> idea. I don't believe it. What about it? After you pass midfield, there's no more offside. Okay. Nah, and you on. cannot oh. stay inside the. You can stay the inside the area. Community. What is this Bay Eight over there? Where <laughs> 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 the people they park themselves over there by the, the, yeah, by the, by the other goal. Like right a producer. That's the what producer. they do. That's yeah, what yeah, they right. do when they play over there. Fine loan against the whatever. 
That's what they do. And then Rico scores right, the ball. Bro. Oh, Rico. Gaetano is right. I'm very good. You can do half field. They said, asked me to I play. Said, They're begging me to play. I said, I, I don't believe play. in it. It's just an idea. That's a bad idea. <laughs> That's <laughs> a horrible idea. So what's the solution? That's Pete, you're a smart guy. What's the solution? What would you do, Questionable. Pete? It's 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 hard. I mean, I think the best way to look at it would be to potentially look at it like um, not necessarily. You can you you want to be able to zoom in enough, but all this like ruler and, so and my inches and my this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, you. I think say. you have to look at it with the human eye. That's how you have you would have no. to determine. You're telling hold me on, you're human. On. You're telling me that you're human. I, I don't trust know. anybody from Inter to be human. All right, forget it. Well, I'm saying by the, by the <laughs> monitor, by the monitor, uh -huh. right? You look at if the guy is onside or offside. If you can't tell that he's offside, then the call on the on the on the, on the field stand. But there's a gray this. area, uh, Pete. I think if they made a the line thicker, there's just black and white on that sense. If you think about it that way, because if you say, "Oh, for the he, for him, it's obvious. For him, it's not obvious." But if you made the line a little bit thicker, but we still have gray area in football. Like, I know, but fouls less, are gray area. I know, but make it but minimize always, as much as you can. But the thing is, like that, you're always gonna have an offside call by this much. But it's you make the thing but it's of, better uh, for for generalization because one ref would see it differently. At least with a thicker thing, it's more black and white in that sense. Technically, technically. Mike, Mike, we're not dealing with it with the mozzarella or mortadella. Okay, what do you think? Tell me your What thing. I would say, okay, it's, it's, either, it's either you, you say, okay, look, if, if the two players, the, defend, the defender and the offensive player, they're pretty much almost... No, you can't do pretty pretty much. much. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. like, no, uh, the the arm is not going to do the no, difference. No, no. If the body's there... And no. a slightly ahead, so things like that. It's not gonna do. What slightly? Anto, if you have, if you, you have, have your size, like this, you're already running. You have an advantage. You have advantage, exactly. So it should that's, be based that's why on. That's if you look, if a referee looks and say, "Does this guy have any advantage, or yeah. does he have no advantage at all?" Yeah, yeah but, but then you make a subjective. That's what I'm saying. But we already have so many subjective calls. We have everything well, is subjective. The, uh, All the fouls are subjective. No, but the offside is not the time, subjective. The time, okay, but the time that's added it on is be. subjective. It shouldn't be, yeah. The time shouldn't be, but it is. But it is. Yeah. Right. So they do do a, but do we have to do a better job? Yes, like, of course. We're talking about the offside right now. Yeah, we're talking... <laughs> Yeah. Which is, but yeah, my, you know, my they're trying is, to make a scientific as a scientific. Yeah. I don't want to do this. This is not video games. This, this, what we have right now, I would rather have a subjective person tell me that a that's that, and that be wrong than have this 3D technology of zooming in and for a toenail being offside. I think that's it should, what I would thicker rather. Thicker line, less gray area. I think that's the best thing so far. Unless someone has a better line. idea. Thicker line. What thicker line? A thicker line, so it's not as precise. <laughs> what are you crazy? <laughs> Why am I crazy? What's your thing? Oh, similar. My yeah. elbows a little. What is What's this? What's yours? This is a video game, my ticker line. How is it a video game? No. Anyway, it's it either the old thing is uh, all or nothing. But you brought nothing of substance. <laughs> no, I said, I said, no, I said, no, you didn't no, think anything right. of I would say if the body is pretty much the overlap. Pretty it's much. Fine. You know what pretty That's much it. is? That's subjective. Okay. For you, it's pretty much. For another person, it's not. Uh, event, uh, event when, uh, when we played, uh, you know, uh, 50 years ago <laughs> in the streets, yeah. The offside was if you Her were screamed louder. <laughs> if if I was one step ahead of you, then that was offside. But if if we were on the same line, that was never an offside. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to be one step over. So if the goal is over there and I was on the other side of him, that was offside. But if we both on the same line, they didn't call it. We we never called offside. Yeah. Now you say. I mean, it's crazy that for yeah, this no, much that's you're yeah, that's you can you can. I agree. Anyway, that's, that shouldn't be Juventus. Yeah. Now I'm checking their last few results. It's now five games in a row they have not conceded a goal. One zero win over Lecce. Zero zero Atalanta. Two zero win over Torino. One zero over Milan. One zero over Verona. Has it been brilliant? No. no. Has it been beautiful? No. Have uh, but they they're cannot, starting to get the results. results. They're grinding them out. Against teams that let's, if we're honest, they should win. And and I'm with you. I didn't get to speak about the Milan game, but uh, I'm with you. Juventus were never in the game in the first half. And I think if they play 10 v 11 against everybody, all right, they'll, Juventus will win the league. But Milan really shot themselves in the foot yeah. in, into that game. Yes, Juventus win. They it's 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 really good. They grind it out. If they play <laughs> against a team that has 10 men, they lock you down. It's mm. impossible to ever yeah. to ever concede a goal. And I want to say, impossible. I want to have Juve deserve the win regardless. I think the King uh, should have scored. Two goals. But, yeah, yeah, two, two goals. that were just crazy. And I, I, I got to say, Keane's been improving the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. 
He's been hustling, even though you can say whatever. He's not a prolific goal scorer. He he does not stop running. He's like a, a hungry dog, and you love that in a strike that never stops running. And he, I think he's really earning his stripes. And I'm happy that he's still getting called up for Italy. You can say oh he doesn't score, but he's really showing what it takes. I think he ch he's uh, kind of changes mentality. In the past, you could say oh he was late for some things or whatever. But I I really feel like there's a new Keen, a different mentality, and I'm here for it. I've always been a fan of Moise Keen. I think he was great. At other teams, he was loaned out to like Verona, and all credit to him, he's great. But uh, let's just say it was 0 0 just based on the books. That goal at the end by Cambiaso, man, I forgot what the defender was. I think it was Davidovic for Verona that couldn't clear out that ball. That was an that was embarrassing defending. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was right there, and he like missed the ball completely. It was it was really it was like se semi pro defending there. I don't yeah, know if you guys remember you, that. You uh, yes. you brought up uh, Italian strikers. Also, we just watched. Uh, we just finished watching uh, Atalanta beating Empoli three zero. Skamaka yeah. two goals. The first goal. You, did you see it? The back heel, beautiful. We have and a assist, right? center forward. The national team has a center forward. Hallelujah. <laughs> yep, Mike. You said Abemos attaccante. Oh yeah, another Italian show. Immobile scored too. Why? Why yeah, we never? Why we never play that? Mike. Mike, you were saying that he had an assist. He had two posts. Yeah. He had a goal called I off sides, and uh, that was all within sixty-five minutes. Yeah, I saw it. Great stuff. Scamacca is our savior. But That's what did Peter say? P oh, before the pot, what you say when Scamacca scored? Oh, I mean. Oh, like he, he's gonna he, soften it no, up now. You, go, you, go. you score versus Empoli. It's yeah. as if it's Immobile scoring thirty goals in Serie A and not being able to perform in, in the Italian national team. So Scamacca has to continue this rhythm. He has to do it versus Milan. He has to do it versus Inter. He, he has scored to do versus Juventus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, give, give him credit. Okay, I give him some credit. On, but but uh, he's our only hope. Do you see anything? <laughs> uh, you see anything else? You didn't see Immobile's penalty. <laughs> you see, you, oh, I'm you rooting for the guy. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. Right. You scored no, two goals. We got Frattesi. We got Frattesi. Scores all the time. And you know, but in Inter he sits on the bench. You know, in Inter sits on the bench. The Italian national team is a national team player, and he scores. But in Inter, you know. He needs to be. He needs to be choosers, consistent, right? though. Scamacca's thing yeah. is, he needs to be yeah, consistent. Yeah. And I listen to some of what Gasparini says, and Gasparini is a lot of the reason why he went there. It's that belief. Mm -hmm. He hasn't always been there. He's a little bit frustrating sometimes because we know the potential that he has, or I should say, the skill that he has. Because yeah. those kind of goals, they're not a goal that everybody can score. You have to be touched to be able to do this. You it's know, he's in your six blood. five. But he's got such good feet and such good technique, mm -hmm. and we kind of don't want. I don't want to make the analogy, but I'm gonna, I guess. Oh boy! I don't. We don't want to see more wasted talent from a from an Italian striker like we did with Mario Balotelli and everything that he gave us. We want to see somebody who's dedicated, who every single day comes and understands. Because this is a window of opportunity. If you think about it, for a player that it, it's all there for you. You you could be handed the number nine. You have it all there. It's not like in the past where there's a million great Italian strikers in front of you. You can do something special, and especially with the rest of the team around you, you finished, you you solved that number nine. This Italy team, maybe we have other problems, but it starts to truly compete. So I just hope that he understands that, and I hope he continues on this path, because even for Atalanta, they're top four. I'm looking at them right now. 19 points, six points behind Inter, six points, four points behind Juventus, and uh, only three behind Milan. This Atalanta side, they've they've shored up their defense uh, a lot more than I think in the past. They also had always a problem with the home and, and away games where they were very inconsistent. You know, when you lose games at home, it doesn't really make too much sense. But I, I see them that they're able to manage games a lot better than they were in the past. And they're playing in Europe, we might add. That's very important uh, to juggle a team like Atalanta who doesn't have the biggest budget to juggle between Europe and Serie A. It's, not, it's very difficult. And even Lukman is not there yet. He's not the same as last year where he started off in incredible form. The coach so, is the top, one at the top. Come on. We keep saying Gasperini is not capable to manage a big team. Gasperini knows what he's doing. So Gasperini is always going to make... A, the changes is gonna. He knows how to manage the game. He knows that when you're winning, to slow a little bit things down. He's not gonna go all the way. Gasparini is something past that he maybe purely. Well, in the past, but not, not anymore. It does uh, with the player that he has that right PSG now. PSG yeah, game he, still give me nightmares. Yeah. That game. Like he, no, I'm so, saying that he didn't make adjustments. I wish Pioli will be just looking up to somebody like him because uh, he's the one that I can just uh, teach you how to manage games uh, the, the proper way. So let's say Pioli, if you're listening to this, just. Copy. Not copy, but just copy. look at the game once in a while. Lazio also, we, we watched them. It was very, 
such an unlucky way for Fiorentina to lose in the, in the end. Uh, mm. Milenkovic with the handball, Chido Immobile, who ha- hasn't had a good year, hasn't had a past couple months, a good past couple months, to be honest with you. Jeez. No, ever since the accident that he had mm-hmm. with that tram and stuff, he, he's not been himself. They get the win 1-0 against uh, Fiorentina. But I mean, Classic. what is this guy thinking about, this guy Milenkovic? Is, you know, the guy... He puts his, his hand out like, what is it, basketball? You're trying to put your hand in front of the guy's eyes so that he doesn't see the ball. What, what are you doing with your arm all out? It's I don't think it was intentional, Gaetano. I don't think so. He, the he, ball is coming. <laughs> he's going he back. Does. And he sees that he cannot get the ball with his head. And he, he does this. It's not intentional, like Anto. This like is, Gaetano, it's Anto. not a natural oh, move, to what he did. It's not I, saw, I thought that it was a little bit more more skewed toward to be a natural way of just nah. handling your body. Nah, but no, it no, just, look at it again. I looked at it 10 times. Yeah, I agree with Fiorentina. <laughs> Fiorentina. <laughs> second classes. Fiorentina deserved this game. They played very well. They, especially in the... I mean, every time they lose the ball, they get it right back. Mm. They press, Within they press seconds, well. they, they get it right back. And Italian is not scared. You know, he, he goes. He goes to, for the win. Absolutely. Uh, not some, um, like other coaches, that as soon as Mourinho, they win 1-0, they, they, they go Allegri. 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 <laughs> Allegri. Mourinho. Allegri. Three wins in a row now for Mourinho. Lazio. Even in, in uh, Serie A. Hey, I didn't mm. like Lazio. I, I'm sorry, but Lazio, I didn't Don't like. Be sorry. I didn't like the way they played. Yeah. This guy's getting super something. I mean, Zaccagni, <laughs> he, he played. Uh, he played terrible. <laughs> uh, the the center forward. Uh, uh, Castellanos. The Castellanos. I don't know. He, he started he, again though. He started again, but it's, it's not, it's not he made there. a couple. I saw you. He, he was. He did, uh, you know, I think he did his job. He, he came in, time. he just a couple shots, he did pass the ball, he did it. Uh, <laughs> he passed the ball, he did <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple nice ball. Ball. assists, <laughs> assists. Yeah, I must have a couple nice I, assists. I, I didn't That's like the, the way Lazio played today. I like the way Fiorentina played. How tall is this guy here, Pete? Castellanos, how tall is he? How tall? How tall? He's the same height as Immobile. No. I don't think so. Yeah, yes. No, we can't. They were next to each other. He's 5'10. No, he's tiny, isn't no, he? No, he's 5'10. I he's thought he was small. shorter, to be honest. But he, it's because everyone next, else around him. He was him. next to uh, Immobile when to they me, scored. It's five, Immobile is the same height. Immobile says 5'11 and a half. So I guess they're pretty. They're yeah, and a half. This guy's who? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's like I'm putting on. And what's the other guy? He's 5'10. I thought he was shorter, to be honest. So maybe, yeah. Uh, um, okay, Mike, it's almost your side. Yeah. Almost, almost. Yeah, almost yeah. If he wears heels, it'll be oh, my yeah, height. Four, five. Actually, no, it, says, it says he's mobile <laughs> six foot. It says six foot. What did you think? Another F and F. He said I'm four to five. <laughs> <laughs> A quarter of an inch. Uh, what else did we miss? What else did we miss? Um, Ballon d'Or. Milan missed the three Ballon points. D'Or. Let me see. I don't like. Uh, Who's I the Ballon d'Or, Antonio? You know, to be honest with you. You know, we were discussing this before uh, we got uh, we got into the podcast, into this uh, discussion. I think uh, it's debatable. If uh, we were, uh, if uh, France would have won, I think Mbappe should have been uh, given yeah, the, the, the But Ballon they didn't win. Yeah. So yeah. Then they know, why win are we it? talking about well, that? Messi, Messi, <laughs> Messi is because it was the only thing missing on his career, and he achieved the the goal of winning the the, the World it's, Cup. It's not a that. lifetime achievement award. It, it's well, but last late, twelve but late on your career, late is not easy. Messi was not was not at his prime when he won last year. The, but that's the, not the, the argument. Cup. But the well, argument is who was the yeah. best player over the past season? Yeah. Well, uh, well, I would I would put Mbappe, Mbappe, and not Holland. Either, either or. Ooh. Mbappe for what? Losing Ooh. in the final or doing what with PSG? But well, who's first? You said Mbappe or, or Holland? I would put Holland first. I mean that makes more sense than Mbappe, <laughs> but it still doesn't I make sense. I would put Alan first because they won everything. They won. They won the triplet with uh, with Guardiola. Yeah, but look at that, that team that they had too. Uh, yeah, but Holland broke every what do you record. Look at the team and well, look at the team. Well, they didn't have De Bruyne the last three three months. He did a lot. But also, Man City's had the same team. The only thing that was missing was Holland. He came the and, they won, and they won. And they won the trouble. It was for the summer till the well, summer. Listen, the, the, the stats. Through. The stats are huge for this guy here. I mean, he's a big guy. He's telling me whatever he wants. <laughs> what are we but talking stats, about? He scored so many goals. They didn't scored. even qualify for the World Cup, Norway. <laughs> Who cares about Norway? We're talking about the, the team. Yeah, but that's not on him. He won bro. with the know, but it's part of it. That's not on him. What do you mean it's not on him? It's not it's, his fault that they I'm not saying it's but. Everything's okay, so looked on. Okay, so you could have your answer. That was Antonio's okay. answer. What is your but answer, But I'm just Mike? asking uh, why from that. And I said Man City have a stacked team at the end of the day. But they also have right? had the same stacked team, and Holland came in, and they won the treble. 
Yeah. They okay. didn't win. They didn't win the Champions League. They never won the Champions like League. Like he was a striker that they're missing. Yeah. yeah. And they got, got they got a striker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like a a little team. They were very. They were okay. top. Argentina's team. That, a stacked but team they, too. They should have won. Man City should have won. How many uh, years ago? Also, they had a really good team. Argentina. You can see make the exact same argu- argument for Argentina. Mm-hmm. They had a good team. Yeah. Of course. They had a stacked team. Yeah, but a lot of players that not not. I wouldn't say it was fa- uh, Argentina were maybe favorites for. There's a lot of teams like, oh, this team could, oh, this team can, this so team. So my, who's your choice Messi for was Ballon d'Or? Ballon d'Or? I mean, listen, Messi won it, and I agree with Anto in terms of later in his career after Prime, he put Argentina on his back. He was involved, I think, in almost every single goal. On so his I think back. He- I would think so. No, he was the leader no? of the team. This right, year, no, no, he was the, the, in the every last goal. World Cup, he was the leader. But uh, look, I'm not biased. I'm just saying uh, he was like involved in every single goal. Every every goal that Argentina scored, you got to give it to him. The first time they lost to Iran, and then after that, uh, who was it? Saudi. 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 Yeah. And then from that, they, they won everything. I mean, you got to give credit to that. Mm-hmm. But I think you could give credit to both. I think you could both can be true. Well, uh, obviously, and Messi is unbelievable. What he did in the yeah. World Cup was great. But I, for me. I don't like the double standards. I, I can't stand the double standards of one year we're going to go by who scored the most goals. That's who wins the Ballon d'Or, right? Yeah. But then the next year it's, oh no, if you won the World Cup, that that's the most important thing. The World Cup yeah, is the greatest yeah. competition. It's a popular Javi and Iniesta with, with, so, with Spain won how Euro is the World Cup, but they never saw, they never got the Ballon d'Or. It went to the club, Schneider right? Schneider also. Look, look, Schneider. look but, at us. We are but, fighting but, right Casano. now. But Marco, we are fighting right now, debating who could have been the, the winner and all the stuff. I will say Haaland. Mike said, oh, it's messy. You could have said something else. I think web it's a vote. It's a vote g- given by the pl- by players. No, okay, it's journal- journalists. Journalists. journalists okay. It's lost its credibility. Yeah, no, For it's years, it's lost its yeah, credibility. Yeah, we, that that you, we, can't, we just can't have double... My thing is you yeah. can't have double Stick standards. What are we doing? Is it... For who scores the most goals and who wins the most trophies? Is that what we're doing it on? But Who's the best player? How are we determining that? Standards because no, to everyone, because right? but but my point is there are some years where we go off of that, and everyone has come out and said he won the World Cup, so he should be it, right? But then if you look at the the stats, it, the last time a World Cup winner won the Ballon d'Or was who? 2006, Fabio Cannavaro. Mm-hmm. So we haven't gone on it in 20 years, and now it's only whoever won the World Cup. That is weird to me. That but part <laughs> is strange. Uh, Mike. Because every other year. Like, it's like a popularity contest I, I, I right now. You know what, you know what the I other thing that bothers that. me too is? Is the argument, and I can't believe I heard this say it, and it shows that this is probably what journalists did too. Holland's got plenty more years ahead of him. He's a young guy. Yeah, that, Are you yeah, kidding me? Yeah, yeah, no, the guy can get, the guy can get injured yeah, and never be, be there again. When I hear that argument, I get it. No, me crazy. I agree with that. that. Door, is he the MVP or is he the best player? Best player. Best player. So it's not the MVP. It's a best player award. That's what it is. Well, <laughs> Me- Messi is the best player. I mean, but then Messi was he the win best player year. of the past year? Was he the best player of the past year? Is the question? Because that's what it is. Technically, but he was not the best player in the last uh, in the last World Cup. Not this World Cup. The one before it, and they gave it to him. You know, so with, I don't think with it's Barcelona, f- right? What was what did he do there? He probably he won didn't win champ. the World Cup. Yeah, he probably won the Champions yeah, League, right? Uh, so, it, like you said, you know. He didn't win the World Cup, and that, you know why didn't they give it to uh, whoever won the World Cup, right? So, so who, 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 you, who is it, Gaetano? Who's your pick? No, not not Messi. I would not think who? Messi. Um, you gotta have a thing if you don't pick. I would, I would to. I would go with Mbappe. Why? Why? Because yeah, what, what, did what, he, what did he do for France? I mean, they, they were they were out of it. The guy brought him back yeah, okay. and made it such a, a, a one of the a best thriller. Yo, that was, that was it. You're she the convinced that keeps me. On giving. You convinced me. Mbappe. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, was. Yeah, All right. And um, so, we gotta Mbappe? Get Pete. Oh, Pete. Right. Pete, what do you think? Lautaro is going to say. Fratesi, Fratesi. I was going to say Leao. Ma. Oh. Leao Maravillao. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, shit. Go ahead. Listen, for me, Messi <laughs> is the best player and potentially the GOAT for GOAT mm. for this uh for, for football yeah. as we know it. Uh what he's been able to do for so many years. And now I get it. This is supposed to be just for last year. But last year, let's not forget, Argentina lost the first game yeah. in the World Cup. And versus Mexico, they nearly 
you know, tied or, or and yeah. they could have been a serious issue. Yeah. Messi found the goal yeah. to win the game. And then what we know now, you know, throughout that whole tournament, he was on something. Like he was really, really good and he, he had the objective. So I get, you know, Haaland as far as numbers mm. and statistics and everything else, he was amazing. But let's not forget, he didn't score the winning goal in the Champions League final. Haaland, right? Oh, Rodri, right? It was Rodri. Good and point. I'm not say, Good I'm, point. You know? Good so, point. I didn't think about that. You know. He only scored like every goal leading up. To I that. get it. I get it. But for me personally, it's like Messi was able to finally win that World Cup. And that was, you know, his crowning moment. That's true. You but know, for that a guy that had, though, listen, that's my problem with No, but it. I don't think it's not surrounded no, but by I don't him. Think, Otherwise, I, every year we just give it to that. But I don't think it's about well, it's not before, that. Right? It's, not, it's not if you win the World Cup. <laughs> or you should go based on that. I think it's just more so the the whole full story of Messi and the fact that he won the World Cup. Then it was he always going to go to him. Marco, no Marco was right. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> this is like a, the, the 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 Ballon d'Or for your career. It's like okay, we are giving to you because you've been great for the last ten years, but we are judging this year. This is a year after year. Did Messi do? enough to deserve the Ballon d'Or. The fact that he won the World For Cup, me, yes. that he won the, with the Barcelona, that he won the, with the... Oh, he won the World Cup this year. All right. Oh, but this, we are giving him a career achievement. No, I'm not. I'm giving it's him the, the Ballon d'Or for that year. The stats, they're clearly saying that Mbappe and, uh, and so Haaland goalkeeper can never much win. better. The goalkeeper can never win a Ballon d'Or. No, no goalkeeper no. never win. No, no, no. What are you saying? No, no. 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 I'm not saying that. I'm, I've been saying that it's been an exaggeration of giving mm. Messi this uh, achievement that I think is way over the top. Just get a young kid like Haaland or give it to Mbappe. What's I don't know. For me, Haaland, Haaland, a little bit. Okay, what's a career, lifetime career? That I don't get. I don't get either Sophia one of those Lauren, arguments. Sophia Loren. Who's that? When uh, when, they, when they listen, they ever that the Hemi. So actress, they ever that, actress. Yeah. What do you, what do you where call? are you going with this? No, yeah, I'm going know. to oh. that sometime. Even if you don't make a movie in the last twenty years, they call you in over there because <laughs> they give you a lifetime award. We we'll give you the, the, your career uh, uh, award like the the. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll get you one of those World oh Cup. Yeah, look at that. I'll give you one of those. The Emmys. What, what, is it, what do they call that kind Oscar. of a show? The I don't, Oscar. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't even like When my wife was watching the Oscar, I just turned the TV immediately. Uh, <laughs> she told the YouTube channel. That. No, I don't. It's, listen, listen. <laughs> those journalists, I think they, they should be staying out of just giving Who a word to sport. There should be maybe one player, one or two players for each team. For each team. A lot of teams. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, how, you, many, yeah I mean, how many hey, players do that? The Ballon d'Or, is that a war, a, a world, war world. stuff? Just You're, get two, two plays for each uh, for each team the in the, world. On the world and let them just vote it online. I'm I'm like, <laughs> you don't have that. Hey, the theater. Like, oh, the theater over there. You go, you, oh, unless you're going to a big stadium and you do it in the big stadium. You said a lot. Like, hey. All scammers going to be doing it. Can they text? text? Can they text a call? You went over there at La, La Scala di Milano. How many Greek, people can you feed in La Scala? Player, a Greek player is Those people voted online. online. Don't worry. Anyway, okay. I think on that note, it's time to end, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao.